In this lesson, we will learn how to solve motion questions where there are multiple trips or there are multiple travelers. In this example, there are two separate travelers, Ada and Carl, who are both traveling from Townville to Villageton. We are told the speed of each traveler, and we are told that Ada arrives in Villageton one hour before Carl does. Our goal is to determine the distance from Townville to Villageton. So how do we begin? Well, a useful approach here is to see what word equations we can write. To do this, we should consider three possible themes, time, distance, and speed. So to begin, what kind of equation can we write that shows the relationship between Ada's travel time and Carl's travel time? Well, the question tells us that Ada arrives in Villageton one hour earlier than Carl does. This means that Ada's travel time was one hour less than Carl's travel time. So if we add one hour to Ada's travel time, then the two subsequent times will be equal. So this is the word equation that we can write based on travel times. What about the next theme? What sort of equation can we write based on distances? Well, since Ada and Carl are both traveling from Townville to Villageton, we can say that the distance that Ada traveled and the distance that Carl traveled must be equal. So this is the word equation we can write based on distances. What about the last theme? Can we write an equation based on speeds? Well, we are told that Ada's speed was 100 km per hour and Carl's speed was 75 km per hour. So we could write two equations, Ada speed equals 100 km per hour and Carl's speed equals 75 km per hour. Now that we have written three word equations, which one should we use to solve the question? Well, let's use each word equation to solve the question three times, and then we can examine which approach is best. Let's begin with our first word equation. Our goal here is to replace Ada's travel time and Carl's travel time with algebraic expressions and then solve the resulting equation. To do this, we will use the fact that travel time is equal to distance over speed. Now, we are told that Ada's speed was 100 km per hour, but we don't know the distance. In fact, the goal here is to find the distance. So let's let D represent the distance from Townville to Villageton. At this point, we can say that Ada's travel time equals the distance D divided by his speed 100 km per hour. And to this time, we will add 1 so that it equals Carl's travel time. Now, since Carl's speed was 75 km per hour, his travel time must equal d, the distance, divided by his speed of 75 km per hour. At this point, we have an equation we can solve for d. First, we will combine the terms on the left-hand side by first rewriting 1 as 100 over 100. Now that we have common denominators, we can add the terms to get the following. From here, we can cross multiply, then expand the left hand side, then subtract 75d from both sides, and then divide both sides by 25 to get d equals 300. So the distance from Townville to Villageton is 300 kilometers. Okay, now let's return to our word equations and solve the same question using the word equation that says Ada's distance equals Carl's distance. To transform this into an equation with algebraic expressions, we will use the fact that distance is equal to the product of speed and time. Now we know Ada's speed, but we don't know his travel time. So let's let A equal Ada's travel time. Now since Ada arrived in Villageton one hour before Carl did, we know that Carl's time is one hour more than Ada's travel time. This means Carl's travel time must be A plus 1. We now have enough information to rewrite each person's travel distance using algebraic expressions. Ada's distance will equal his speed of 100 km per hour times his travel time of A hours. Next, since Carl's speed was 75 km per hour, his travel distance will be the product of his speed, 75 km per hour, and his time of A plus 1 hours. At this point, we have an equation we can solve for A. First, we will expand the right-hand side, 
then subtract 75a from both sides, and then divide both sides by 25 to get a equals 3. This tells us that Ada's travel time was 3 hours. At this point, we can find the distance that Ada traveled by applying the distance formula. The distance Ada traveled will equal the product of his speed of 100 kilometers per hour and his travel time of 3 hours. This equals 300, so the distance from Townville to Villageton is 300 kilometers. All right, let's return to our word equations and solve the same question using these two word equations. To transform these into real equations, we will use the fact that speed is equal to distance over time. Now, since we are not given any information about the distance traveled or the time they spent traveling, we must assign some variables. To begin, let's let d equal the distance between Townville and Billigton. And as far as times are concerned, let's first let a equal Addis travel time. Now, as we saw earlier, if a equals Addis travel time, then Carl's travel time must be a plus 1. We now have enough information to rewrite each person's speed. Let's begin with Addis speed. This will be equal to the distance d divided by Addis travel time of a hours. This speed, we are told, is equal to 100 kilometers per hour. Now, if we take this equation and cross multiply, we get d equals 100 times a. Next, we will work on Carl's speed. When we apply the speed formula here, we see that Carl's speed is equal to the distance d divided by his travel time of a plus 1 hours. And this speed, we are told, is equal to 75 kilometers per hour. Now, if we take this equation and cross multiply, we get the following equation. From here, notice that our first equation is set equal to d, and the second equation is also set equal to d. As such, we can combine these two equations to write 100a is equal to 75 times a plus 1. To solve this equation for a, we can expand the right-hand side, then subtract 75a from both sides, and then divide both sides by 25 to get a equals 3. This tells us that Atta's travel time was 3 hours. So to find the distance d, we can now apply the distance formula using Atta's travel information. The distance will equal the product of Atta's speed, 100 kilometers per hour, and his travel time of 3 hours. This equals 300, so the distance once again is 300 kilometers. We have now examined three different ways to solve this question based on three different word equations. Now, which of these equations was the best one to work with? Well, let's analyze each one beginning at the top. To compare travel times, we already had the speed of each person, but we needed to assign a variable to the distance. This was very useful, since it meant the resulting equation would be in terms of d, and the goal of the question was to find the distance. What about the middle equation? To use this equation, we already had the speed of each person, but we needed to assign variable expressions to the travel times, which meant the resulting equation was in terms of Ada's travel time. Now, we were still able to solve the question using this word equation, but it took us longer to do so, because after we determined Ada's travel time, we had to then use this information to determine the distance traveled. What about the bottom equation? To use this equation, we had to assign variables to both the distance and the travel times, which meant the resulting equations had two variables. So as we are considering which word equation to use, we should try to determine which equation will end up using the variable we are ultimately trying to solve for. As such, the top equation was the best equation. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that when tackling motion questions involving multiple trips or multiple travelers, we should first consider what word equations we can write. Then use the word equation that results in the most favorable variables.